Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mohamed Amin Carlos and you're watching News on 2. Now, Muslims have been called to use the month of Ramadan to do good and refrain themselves from committing anything prohibited by religion and society. Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamed in his Ramadan video message yesterday said he hopes that fasting would not just be treated as a ritual, but also as a lesson to Muslims on the importance of self-restraint. The Premier, in his message, also advised against overspending at Ramadan bazaars and buying more than one could eat during the fasting month. Kita tak boleh makan tetapi ada banyak lain lagi yang perlu kita kawal. Pada bulan puasa, biasanya kita mengadakan bazar Ramadan. Pada bazar ini, terdapat bermacam-macam juadah yang dijual dan kadang-kadang kita terpengaruh dan membeli lebih daripada yang diperlukan untuk kita. The Premier also said those who trade at Ramadan bazaars are looking to get better income in Ramadan. However, he added, as a Muslim, one should control from overspending. Now, the people have been called to fight corruption, as this will help the government's effort to develop and regain the country's status as an Asian tiger. Now, commenting further, Prime Minister Chun Dr. Mahathir said those who have been chosen to lead the country should be free of corruption, as they will be an example to the subordinates. <laughs> kerana rasuah walaupun mereka berpendapat bahawa dengan rasuah mereka akan dapat sokongan daripada rakyat Tun Dr. Bahadir said this in his speech at a town hall with Perak civil servants at the Royal Perak Golf Club in Ipo Perak Now, the Pakistan Harapan government must be confident and not cave in and make the mistake of defaulting on its manifesto promises due to pressures from certain parties. Now, party Karilan Rayat President Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim said the government must stay true to its struggles and remain transparent, clean and not arrogant. Dato Sri Anwar said the coalition should also not forget its commitment made to defend every single citizen of the country. Dato Sri Anwar said this at the DAP 2019 National Congress held in Shah Alam yesterday. Well, meanwhile, DAP Secretary General Lim Guan Eng said that Pakistan Harapan must continue to convince the people that the country's politics, economy and culture is guaranteed. Who viral the matter on social media sites without making a formal complaint only worsened the situation while the problem remains unresolved. Karena kita tahu bahawa kadang-kadang penggunaan kita ni dia fluctuate kan ada yang musim panas dia tinggi rendah dan 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 apa yang kita respon saya daripada apa yang kita dapat daripada DMB ialah meter yang smart meter ni oleh kerana adalah selari dengan hasrat kita untuk melahirkan smart city. Melaka kita nak lahirkan Smart City. Jadi kita kena pakai Smart. Well, senior citizens must be given special attention because by year 2030, Malaysia will be an aging nation with 15% of the country comprised of the elderly. And Deputy Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Wan Aziz Awan Ismail, said children too must also be given attention, particularly in the aspect of education, in line with the policy that requires every child to have a proper education. 
Down to three, down to one, Aziza service at a gathering with single mothers at Rumah Murah Lorong C6 at Kampung Simsim Sanakan yesterday. The program was organized by Kampung Simsim PKR branch chief in collaboration with Persatuan Community Prihatin Sabah as a charity event coinciding with the Ramadan season. Perasaan kami semua di sini warga ma sangat-sangat bertualah dan bersyukur kepada Subhanallah Taala inilah mungkin kami punya peluang untuk menemui beliau pada hari ini. Terima kasih karena beliau sudi datang kemari untuk memberi bantuan. Ibu sangat berbesar hati lah hari ini. Ya Allah ya Tuhanku uh, dipanjangkan umur. Ya memang kami dari dulu mau kepingin betul jumpa. Alhamdulillah inilah hari yang bersejarah bagi kami uh, penduduk di, di Simsim inilah. During the event, 18 single mothers from Kampung Simsim received donations in the form of basic necessities to help alleviate their financial burdens during Ramadan. Well, the public consultation paper, which contains the new mechanism for the repayment of the National Higher Education Fund, or PTPTN, will be presented to the public later this month. Now, PTPTN Chairman Wan Zaiful Wan John said the announcement will be made soon after Finance Minister Lim Guaneng, Education Minister Dr. Mazdi Malik, and Youth and Sports Minister Said Sadiq Said Abdul Rahman have completed their review on the document. Uh, dalam kertas seperti itu, itu uh, kita akan akan senaraikan idea-idea yang kita kumpul daripada kumpulan-kumpulan pakar yang kita temui daripada bulan Disember sehingga bulan Mac baru-baru uh, ini kita senaraikan pandangan mereka ada pandangan yang kita setuju ada pandangan yang tak setuju tapi saya ambil sikap kita kena amanah dengan input-input yang dibagi Wan Zaiful said this to reporters after attending the Memorandum of Agreement, MOA, between e-wallet application handling company Kipli Pay, Cindy Renberhard, and University Utara Malaysia, UUM, at the university campus in Sinto Kedah yesterday. Last November, Budget 2019 had stipulated that all PTPTN recipients earning more than 1,000 ringgit would be subjected to salary deductions starting at 2% in order to repay their study loans. Following criticism from various quarters, the cabinet suspended suspended the whole scheme altogether in early December and said it would seek further consultation. On 25th April, Wan Saiful announced new suggestions on the public consultation paper which were derived following roundtable discussions with various quarters since December. The Agriculture and Agro-Based Industries Ministry does not rule out taking the drastic measure of disposing of foreign fishing boats by burning them should the issue of enroachments remain unresolved. And Minister Dato Salahuddin Ayub said the measure needs to take into account the frequency of enroachments and will be thoroughly examined at the cabinet level before it is implemented. Kalau ini pun dengan keterlibatan uh... Kementerian uh, uh, Pertahanan pun uh, mereka menak langgar juga uh, saya akan fikirkan sesuatu dan termasuklah mungkin kita mengambil langkah yang sama kita hapuskan basel-basel mereka sekiranya uh, uh, apa, operasi yang ada ini tidak berkesan itu kita bincang kemudian di pekat kabinet Dato Zalhuddin said this regarding the seizure of a Vietnamese fisherman boat by the Royal Malaysian Navy at South China Sea for allegedly enroaching Malaysian waters. He was present at a swearing-in ceremony at the 40th anniversary celebration of the Johor Bahru Fish Wholesaler Association in Johor Bahru yesterday. The Malacca government reminded residents to make official complaints with Tanaga National Berhad or TNB against alleged electricity tariff charge hike following the installation of the smart meter in Malacca. The Public Works Exco, Transport and Public Utilities Committee Chairman Dr. Mohamed Sofi Abdul Wahab said further action can only be done if a complaint is received. Datu Mohamed Sofi said the actions of some individuals who viral the matter on social media sites without making a formal complaint only worsen the situation while the problem remains unresolved. Karena kita tahu bahawa kadang-kadang penggunaan kita ni dia fluctuate kan ada yang musim panas dia tinggi rendah dan dan, dan apa yang kita respon saya daripada apa yang kita dapat daripada MB ialah meter yang smart meter ni oleh kerana 
adalah uh, selari dengan hasrat kita untuk melahirkan smart city. Melaka kita nak lahirkan smart city. Jadi kita kena kena pakai smart meter. Datuk Muhammad Zofi said this after officiating a program in Durian Tunggal. Now, Region 2 Marine Police successfully crippled smuggling activities to Johor with the seizure of over 60,000 packs of cigarettes following a raid conducted at Taman Unku Tun Amina Skudai. During the raid, police also arrested a lorry driver who was smuggling the cigarettes. Region 2 Commander Assistant Commissioner Paul Q. Kon Chiang said preliminary investigation revealed that the cigarettes were smuggled in from a neighboring country to be sold in Johor to workers from China. The operation was carried out as a result of intelligence obtained from an arrest that took place in April. The lorry which was used by the suspect to smuggle the cigarette was also seized during the operation. The case is being investigated under Section 135, Subsection 1D of the Customs Act 1967. Authorities yesterday crippled a gang known as Gang Tony Cable with the arrest of two men and an Indonesian woman between the ages of 24 and 42 at Kampung Sungai Buntu, Sungai Ringgit, Kota Tinggi, Johor. Now, Kota Tinggi Police Chief Superintendent Ashmon Baja in a statement said following the arrest, police managed to solve 23 cable theft cases at the Petroleum and Petrochemicals Integrated Development Project site, Rapid Pungarang. Now, the gang is alleged to have been in operation since 2018. Police seized various cables, weighing machines, metal cutter, knives and scissors used to cut metals. The total value of the items seized are estimated to be around 230,000 ringgit. The case is being investigated under Section 379 of the Penal Code for theft and Section 427 of the Penal Code for treason. And that concludes this afternoon's edition of News on 2. In our top story, at least 41 killed as a Russian jet catches fire while making emergency landing. Well, join us again at 7 this evening for more updates. Till then, I'm Muhammad Amin Carlos wishing all our Muslim viewers a blessed Ramadan.